Hi, my loves. Thank you so much for visiting my channel. I really hope that you are having a beautiful and an amazing day. If you are new to my channel, welcome. And if you are returning, thank you for all of your love and support. I really appreciate it. This is a timeless collective reading for the sign of Sagittarius. Okay, so the first card is the Tower in the Reverse. And then we have the Knight of Wands. And then the Temperance here. Nine of Cups, the High Priestess. Page of Pentacles, Six of Swords, the Fool in the Reverse. Okay. I'm going to tell you what I'm getting from this. And of course, I'll continue to shuffle on, on camera. With this tower in the reverse, the Knight of Wands and the Temperance here. I feel like you've gotten caught up in the crossfire of somebody's karma. Or even your own. <clears throat> For some of you, like, another person. Yeah. The Knight of Wands in the reverse. Did somebody, or it could have been you or somebody else. Keep in mind, the roles can always be reversed. Somebody made a decision, I feel, with the Knight of Cups in the reverse as well. So this, this is like a situation in itself. This is, this is somebody's energy. At a time when somebody was not happy with themselves, they weren't happy with the situation in their life, somebody made a decision to go on some type of journey to in, entertain a situation that was not good. Again, this could be you or this could be someone that you're connecting with. <clears throat> the card that's up right here is a temperance card. This could be a Sagittarius. doesn't have to be. But then here is the high priestess and it's like there's a division here almost in the energy. So it, it's like I could draw a line in between these energies. Something has happened with this person. Um, they could have done something when they were down and out, insecure about something, lacking patience or whatever. This person right now is probably having a difficult time with embracing love or feeling like deserving of love. They're not happy. This person is going through karma. And the high priestess here, the high priestess, the page of pentacles, six of swords, and then the fool in the reverse. You may have, you could be there in this high priestess energy. You're, 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 you are, um, because of your own divine knowledge as this high priestess, you probably can pick up something about this person <clears throat> that is not good or your, I feel like your spirit is picking up something about this person's spirit that is unclean. I'm going to clarify, of course. I'm, I don't feel like this person necessarily is a bad person, but this person could have, um, let me see. This person, or you, whoever this is, or it could be you and this person. You, you, or this person have had some kind of um, issues with self-esteem at some point, and we've all been there. Low self-esteem um, will get you. Yeah, look at that. Well, soulmate. I'm sorry. I thought this said self-love. So a lack of self-love, though, has gotten somebody caught up in some karmic situations. So, you could have met this person at a time when you was going through a karmic situation, or they were, or you both were. And maybe some of you, there's something here for you to do over, either with this person, <clears throat> or moving into new situations you just need to know. Now, it's interesting because this soulmate card is here. For a lot of you, there's going to be a do-over with you and a person. And some of you will say, already, you're already typing. I'm not going back to the past. And keep in mind, every reading is timeless. Every reading is not your reading. This doesn't necessarily have to be a past person for some of you. This could be anybody in your life and the situation is just having a difficult time with 
getting off the ground, whether it's romantic, you in a business partnership or whatever, it is because when you met this person, you or them or both of you were coming out of a situation. A situation that you had allowed yourself to get into at a time when you were not in the energy of the high priestess. The two energies that are out here is a temperance and the high priestess. You and this person both have a divine energy about yourself. <clears throat> the temperance though, this person did something when they were running out of patience at a time in their life. They, they weren't patient. This person with the Knight of Wands in the reverse. Something in their life was blocked. They, they, there was a lack of self-love um, or whatever. Something was blocked. They got impatient and therefore they got into a situation that they probably shouldn't have been in. Spirit's telling me to move this card away. The tower in the reverse. This, for some reason, I'm getting, this is the energy that is between you and this person. You and this person both are getting caught up in each other's past karma. This high priestess. <clears throat> you, you're, you're more awakened than this person. When you met this person, the page of pentacles, you could have been getting started on something new in your life. A new business venture or whatever. You were planning on something. There was a new manifestation coming up for you. You were moving on to peaceful, calmer waters. Um, you were going through your own life transition. So you were moving. You at your at this place in your journey, you were further along. You you were coming out of what the, the karmic cycle that they were going into. Okay. The fool card is in the reverse. The fool card in the reverse. You may have decided not to take a leap of faith with this person. For some of you with the fool in the reverse, you did take a leap of faith with this person and you went overboard. It started, you started to overcompensate. You started to do too much. And it probably reminded you of Wait a minute. I already came. I already learned this lesson of overgiving and overcompensating. This is this is the same thing I used to do before I realized who I am. I don't have to do this. So you probably pull back. <clears throat> the soulmate. This person is a soulmate to you. You're more awakened than they are. Okay, yeah. And the 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 tie between you and this person is rejection. You both have experienced rejection. And because of all of this, I, see, this is the card I was seeing in my mind, this self-love card. Because of all of the rejection that you and this person have both experienced in life, it has caused issues with self-love. I feel like for some of you, either you or this person, whoever, this, whoever the roles could be reversed, one of you had already gotten on a self-love and healing journey while the other one was just getting onto their journey. For some of you now, this person is catching up with you more so, like spiritually on their journey. They're finally about to embrace self-love, but perhaps there's had to be something else in their life, another major rejection. I'm hearing beyond scare straight. Somebody now has had to face yet another hardship, another major rejection because they were refusing to see that they keep getting in certain situations because of a lack of self-love. Now that that is happening, or it has happened, there's um, like this this video. There's possibly going to be a do over for some of you, or the do over. It could be with this person, or the next time you go into a connection, or the next time they go into a connection, somebody's going to know how to do things differently. I feel like this is for some of you. This was your your last karmic lesson. Not like, not like your last karmic lesson, but there's a karmic lesson that you've been constantly repeating of getting into situations and getting yourself caught up in the crossfire of other people's life or their situations due to a lack of self-love. 
when you meet other people and they're lacking self-love or some kind of awareness, you tend to get involved with these people and then you are affected by their life choices. It throws you off of path. And now you're finally learning. Never again will I do this. Because here, the high priestess, you are working on something new. You are moving on to peaceful, calm waters, and then boom, all of a sudden, the fool, your journey stopped. You got distracted because you got caught up in this person in the crossfire of their, their problems. Somebody here was stuck in karma, ten of wands. Overburdened, carrying a lot of just burdens, a lot of responsibilities, and it comes from this person making bad decisions, two of swords. This person lacks discernment. They don't know how to make up their mind about certain. This person, they don't know how to get out of situations. They, it's, it's something about, yeah, this person, they overanalyze things or they're always confused, so they won't make a decision. Or they didn't make a decision in the past. <clears throat> So for some of you, this, this could be a connection where you and this person, you're meant to come together, but they had to learn this karmic lesson and you did too. Both of you are learning a karmic lesson. They need to be more wise and discerning about getting themselves involved in certain situations or with certain people. But you have the same lesson because you got involved with this person. This was a karmic lesson. We'll see what the outcome is. I don't know if you and this person are going to come together or this is just preparing you to move on to something or someone different. But someone here, their lack of discernment, they sit around in confusion and they overanalyze things. The Seven of Cups, this person could be someone who had a lot of different options. They, they, I'm going to be honest. It seems like this person, when they're down and out, they become like an opportunist. Like this person, they're trying to make it. So... The seven of cups, they're just jumping kind of from person to person, to situation to situation. But when you have dealt with a lot of rejection, this person is honestly in survival mode. And I'm not trying to make excuses, but I'm, I can see how this person has gotten caught up. This person has gotten caught up based on certain situations because of their lack of awareness. It is, it's sort of like this person is actually in denial about the fact that they're in a lower vibration and we've all been there before. This person is, is simple. They're not quite awakened or they're not as awakened and aware as you are. So your spirit is saying, so some of your spirits like this person, they're shysty. They're cunning. They're conniving or something like that. But it's, it's deeper than that. This person is in survival mode because they've been rejected so much. The two of cups is here. So for you, it, well, oh, okay. So I, I asked what's going to happen. For a lot of you, you and this person, you will end up together. The two of cups and the four of wands is here. You will celebrate some kind of union or connection. Even if it's even if it's just platonic, even if it's just a friendship. The two of cups is a soulmate. A soulmate could be a friend, a family member, or a lover. But you and this person, you you have taught each other a very, very important lesson. You taught each other of the importance, not the pinnacles of self-love. The importance of providing for yourself. For some of you, <clears throat> going back to like that opportunist energy. If this person was coming in, this person has been, they're codependent because of rejection. And this has been you too. Some of you, this is like a mirrored soul, like a a soulmate or a twin. Friend. There's a karmic lesson here between the two. Of you. But I feel like whoever I'm talking, the high priestess, at one point you were in this same predicament. Like we're not going to sit here and act like everybody was was born awakened and aware. You've been in this same position before, and that's the do over energy. You're seeing your shadow self in front of you. You're seeing where you came from, but possibly through another person. And maybe you're helping this person get onto their journey. Whether you and this person are meant to do life together as friends or lovers or whatever. This is showing you something so that you can wrap up a cycle. The, it's showing you why 
you it's so important to be independent. Somebody here has not felt worthy of love and they, they're coming off as like an opportunity because they've experienced so much rejection that they have become codependent. So they keep attaching themselves to certain people and situations and, and they have a lot of loose ends. They're carrying a lot of burdens. So if you now are dealing with this person, you're kind of caught up in the crossfire of their drama. <clears throat> But if you, but spirit is saying that you don't need to stick it, stick this out. Like this is like you teach this person, you can feed them or teach them how to fish. I feel like you you fed them, but you are teaching them how to fish too. So this person now is gonna have an opportunity to learn how to become independent because this this is this is a lesson that you're learning not to enable people. You can help people. You can offer them healing, but you don't have to actually <clears throat> enable them. Somebody here has a hard time with speaking up about how they feel because the five of cups is here. Somebody could be stuck on a situation from the past. There's something disappointing. This person could still be dealing with the, the disappointment of some kind of heartache or pain of a past person. A lot of you, this is a romantic situation. And this person... They got themselves caught up in a situation in the past at a time when they were awakened and unaware. This person got caught up in the past with a karmic. And honestly, with the two of cups and the four of wands being here, this person even could have married somebody. What I'm really getting is for some of you, somebody has experienced so much rejection in their life and due to the lack of self-love, they got themselves in a connection with somebody. And I'm picking up a man with a person, a queen of wands, who was very sneaky, deceptive, calculating, calculate like this person betrayed them. But I guarantee you this queen of wands, this queen of wands was a devil in a dress. This queen of wands had prosperity, abundance and other things. And she was willing to share it with this knight of wands in the reverse. These people, they were celebrating together. They could have even gotten married. This person is now experiencing a lot of grief and regret. Because this person that they went to at a time when they were looking for love, they found it, but in the wrong place and with the wrong person. So for some of you, if this is a masculine, they're still dealing with the fact that they, they haven't been able to forgive themselves for dealing with this person. Whoever this queen of wands person is from their past, this person, the star. This person could be very like attractive. The queen of wands and the star, they're, they're attractive. They could, I'm here. they could be a creator, an influencer. Okay. Nine of Pentacles, they're probably very um, abundant. This person now, is in the Nine of Wands. They've gone through something with this person. So you could have met a person when they were coming out of a really bad breakup with somebody else. And now they they got into that situation because of a lack of self-love coming from a lot of rejection. And now it's probably difficult for you and this person to have anything because they're also afraid that you will reject them. This, this is somebody here who is extremely codependent. Queen of Swords and the Four of Swords. And I feel like you told this person, uh-uh, you got to go on your own way and learn how to heal. You put up boundaries with this person and you tell them that they need to go on their way and heal. You was like, listen, I'll, I'll feed you today, but I'm going to teach you how to, how to fish. And I'm going to let you go out and catch your own fish and feed yourself. Because what you can't do as a high priestess now is you can't get stuck in somebody else's drama. You can't do that. Five of Wands, Two of Pentacles. Yeah. This person came to you. Nine of Pentacles, juggling. And you got now caught up in the crossfire of this situation. Something in their life is imbalanced. And if this is a romantic situation, when you met this person, they were still involved with whoever this Queen of Wands star is. So, yeah. A lot of this this situation that has to do with this person, it, it has nothing to do with you. But well, you're 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 connected to it because you're connected to this person. The six of cups is here. 
Yeah, this is this is like a, a friend. Friend, somebody, you could have a past life with this person. I feel like you're very comfortable with this person. Six of Cups, Seven of Cups. Something about this situation is very innocent. I keep, I'm hearing the word innocent. It's like a fantasy, but there's also illusions around it too. The three of pentacles, the four of pentacles, four of, ooh, there's too many cards. I'm going to take them down. You have the nine of swords here. Somebody is panicking. Somebody is panicking because they've fallen in love with you. If this is a love situation, the hierophant here, the four of cups, they're panicking because they've fallen in love with you, but they're not offering you a commitment. This person is keeping their heart close. It's in fact, it's closed. They don't want to share anything. Like this person, literally, it, it's like it's like they're off, like they're they're been traumatized by their past. But they have to deal with the fact that this is something that they they got themselves involved in. They have to learn this karmic lesson. The main thing you cannot enable this person. They have to learn this karmic lesson just like you did. You can't go, you can't latch yourself on to a person out of desperation. You you can't accept less than. I feel like this person, even whether it's a man or a woman or whomever, this person literally was dealing with a lot of stuff in their life, the nine of cups that they were actually unhappy with, but they continue to celebrate with somebody because they were insecure at the time. They, this person was lacking something at the time. And so the devil came right in and gave them what they needed. But in exchange, they became unhappy. And that's what the devil would do all the time. Right when you're about to do something good for yourself, the devil will come in with a, a distraction, usually a person. This was a karmic test because for some of you, the high priestess, right when you were about to start working on something, this person came in to you and you had to make a decision. Are you going to sit there and keep on feeding this person or are you going to be a high priestess, a healer, a teacher and teach them how to fish and keep on going? For some of you, that's your lesson. As a healer, you're always going to attract broken people. However, you have to you know, heal, bless, and go. Heal, bless, and go. You, you can't just sit there and, and get caught up with them. This is about boundaries. This is somebody finally, finally like getting rid of all toxic codependent energy. And you have to learn sometimes that you have to give some people tough love in order for them to learn how to love themselves and to grow up. This person may feel like you're rejecting them or turning your back on them, but that's the only way that they're going to realize that they can't use you to help them heal. They're going to have to heal on their own. <clears throat> Page of Cups. This card says innocent. That's what I kept getting here. Something. Page of Cups. The Ace of Pentacles. Like I said, King of Pentacles. Ace of Wands. Wow. Wow. Three of Wands. For some of you, there will be a do-over with this person once the two of you move away from the situation. It's kind of like this person is... Um, it's like somebody is learning from their lover. Because you're, you're, you're in the light. You're more awakened. This person is holding on to you tightly, though. But right now, they, they still have... Karma, they, they still have some kind of darkness around them because of this past situation. But once this person goes within and connects with themselves on a deeper level, like embrace their spiritual journey, the three of wands here, they actually go and start to, to grow and expand the ace of wands. There's going to be a passionate new beginning here. And this person wants to come in and be the one to provide for you. But this person, this is someone who honestly has not been providing for themselves because they're so codependent. 
They have, and, and I mean, I don't know, for some, it could be financially or emotionally. They've been dependent on other people for some type of um, support or validation. It's because they've experienced so much rejection in their life. They don't, I don't feel like this person, for some of you, the person that I'm channeling right now, they don't really mean harm. And they actually want to have the Ten of Pentacles with you. I literally, I asked. You heard me. I'm, what? So what is it? It's a do-over. They want to come in and have a do-over with you, but they first have to drop all of their burdens and go through this awakening. The hangman. Yeah, the ten of swords. They have to heal from this past situation. And they're going to have to see they got themselves caught up in the crossfire of a situation. And because they got themselves caught, caught up in a situation Based that they got into out of fear and out of ego, they now are, are walking around with the energy of death. Everything that they touch is turning into an ending because they have not cleansed themselves or whatever this past situation is. This person is, is actually hurt. I heard they're in sorrow. They're broken about something here that has caused so much chaos and conflict in their life. This person has not completely gotten over this. And I'm, I'm picking up a man. Of course, it could be a woman. They have to take action to get themselves out of this mental imprisonment here. Somebody could really could be dealing with like, like depression. Yeah. In order to have the strength to have six of wands, like victory and success, this person, there's a decision that has to be made. And the decision is for them to get out of this victim consciousness. Somebody is so hurt by a situation that they got into, but there's guilt and shame. Or somebody knows that they got into a situation, and I'm honestly, it was for the wrong reasons. They know that, and they're dealing with that right now, and they're upset about it. They know they got in this situation because they were seeking attention, or they were seeking validation, or whatever. They needed a place to stay, or something. They didn't get into it for the right reasons, but they got bit by this snake. And they all they, they almost didn't get out alive, honestly. But I mean, the venom of this snake is still in this person. The death part, it's like, I mean, it's like the kiss of death. Somebody has, has literally <laughs> been with a, a whole devil in a dress. This was the kiss of death. To go into this connection and then especially... If somebody married this person, that was it. They entered into this covenant, into this union with this very unclean spirit that they got attached to out of, again, some type of desperation. They didn't want to be alone or this, this codependency or whatever. They yoked themselves with somebody that they never should have been with. They have an opportunity to do things better. But either you're in this person's life to teach them this lesson. And this is very difficult for healers. I struggle with this myself. You will find yourself meeting a lot of people and you feel like you're always preparing somebody to go on to another. Journey. And, and usually you, you teach them and then you lose them. That can really, really be difficult. Until you truly accept that you're a healer. And sometimes this, that's just all you're supposed to do is teach them. So some of you as a high priest, like I said, with the fool, you have to know not to overindulge, not to jump overboard and, and be head over heels in situations because nothing is guaranteed. Nobody is telling you that if you help a person or you heal them or whatever, that guarantees that like they're going to be with you and be in your life for good. Sometimes... You're simply just helping a person and putting them on their path. That is a part of, of your journey is to help and to heal. But it looks like in this particular situation for a lot of you, when this person starts to go through this awakening, it, it feels like they like they want to they want to share their success with you. It's what it feels like. It's what the cards are saying. The hermit, it's like they go within. They do the healing work. They gain some type of wisdom and clarity. The three of wands, they start manifesting this brand new beginning. Ace of wands. 
getting new, you know, uh, they, they become passionate about something. They become more driven about a new opportunity. The king of pentacles, they literally become someone who is established. They become a leader. They know what their purpose is. They start manifesting their own abundance. And then boom, here's the ace of pentacles, ten of pentacles. This person is going to go out. And whatever abundance that they get from this lesson that you taught them, they want to bring it back to you. Now, for some of you, this could be a past person coming in and they're like, they really learned some lessons. But you will know who this person is based on do they actually drop all of their burdens. Because I'm saying for some of you, you're like, you're, you could be thinking about someone in your life now or a past person. You will know if this person is serious by how much stuff they drop to come in to make an offer to you. This is not somebody here who was trying to have one foot in and one foot out. This is somebody that's like, I'm dropping everything. And when I get this prosperity and abundance, I'm taking it back to the person that put me on. Judgment is something that's final. The Ten of Wands. Whatever has had this person like... And, and this could be somebody, it's kind of like how, how people, this came out a few days ago, or we, whenever. It makes me feel like, like a, how you hear a lot of men, <laughs> women too, like you hear celebrities do this all the time, whenever they get money, I'm going to buy my mom a house. That's this type of energy. They're like, when I make it, I'm going to buy my mama a house. Like that's this, that's the energy here. When I make it. I'm man, I'm I'm gonna make sure you don't ever have to work again. I'm gonna make sure like that's this person's mindset. The Ten of Wands, the Ten of Pentacles, the Ten of Wands, Judgment, Hangman, hey Ten of Swords, something here is over. It's dead. Look, cycles. It's a cycle. Look at that. Pay attention to the signs of number 10. Something here is over. Alchemy. Then I said before, this could be a Sagittarius. Alchemy. This is like an alchemist. Temperance and alchemist. Somebody is finally going home. They're returning back to a place where they see the beauty in themselves. But look, it's how teachable are you? You could have possibly had to teach this person something, but um, in you teaching them something, you were learning something. And what this person wants to do is they want to be the person to come in later on and show you I, I, that, hey, what you taught me we're, we're on the same page now. We're singing the same tune now. Discovering your life purpose. This person, when they get into their life purpose, they want to come and say, I'm in my life purpose now. So you're being told to have faith. You could be sad right now because for some of you, especially if this is a romantic relationship, there's a there's some kind of um, separation. This person is about to have, they're going to be forced to go on a journey where they have to now have the courage to no longer be codependent. Some of you, you have a person in your life right now. It could even be like a a, um, a sibling for some of you, an adult, a child, an adult child, or something like that. This person has to go and heal. They have to let go. You have to you have to force this person onto their own path. You can't let them just kind of ride you. They have to do this work by themselves. And it's gonna. What this is going to do is it's going to sh it's gonna completely destroy a cycle of codependency. This takes a lot of courage, though, because whoever the high priestess is, a part of you, you want to hold on to this person like like your baby. For some of you, this is a child. You want to hold on to them. You you want to teach them. You want to help them. You want to carry them and keep them safe. But you're gonna have to send them out by themselves. It's like. Being in, they have to go out in the wild for themselves to learn how to hunt. You can't just keep bringing the food to them. Two of Wands. They're going to go out though, and they're going to learn things about the world. And they're going to make the decision to finally come out of the Five of Pentacles. They're going to make the decision to finally come out of this energy of being in lack. 
having hardships, not having security, stability, a lack of maturity, they're going to finally come out of that because the page of swords, the moon, they're going to finally see something that has been hidden from them. They're going to finally realize that they have these emotions, okay, that's actually keeping them from being a real leader. This king of wands is heartbroken. Queen of Cups and the Emperor. This King of Wands is heartbroken about this person that they possibly married or had a business with. This person, it was a kiss of death. Whatever they had with this person, they lost it all. I can tell you that. And now, they don't know who to trust. Two of Swords on the verge. They don't know who to trust. This person is very cold and detached, especially when it comes to love. They do not trust people anymore. Because when they really, really loved this person or they thought they loved this person, they gave a lot and they did not get to celebrate. They did not get what they thought they were going to have, what they had dreamed and fantasized about in this situation. This person, for some of you, if they did not marry somebody, they had their life planned with this person. They really did. They had like they had their life planned. They were fantasizing. They were creating things. I mean, this was the queen of wands to start. They felt like this person was the total package. I'm, I'm being honest with you. And they could be coming to the realization now that, oh my gosh, this was a, it was like a karmic lover. This was all based on an illusion. Somebody is realizing I liked or I loved that person because I was codependent. This person liked what this other person, what they did together or what this person could do for them or how it looked. It was all about their ego. And when this situation came tumbling down and they were left with all of this chaos, conflict, and all of these endings in their life, this person was forced into a dark night of the soul and now they see the truth. But while they were going through all of this, this person probably ran into you. And that showed them what real love is. Because whatever you gave them, you're not asking for it back. You're giving them, like you're teaching them how to fish. You're not just feeding them. So you're saying, I don't have to stay here with you. I'll leave. I just don't, that's when somebody really wants best for you. You're not saying, I'm only going to feed you if you come in and, and have dinner with me. That's real love. Listen, I'll, I'll put you on your feet and send you on your way. If it's meant to be, it's meant to be. If it's not, that's cool too. I did what I was supposed to do as a healer, as a teacher, and now you go on. This is, this is where some parents go wrong, too. They want to shape and mold their children to be who they want them to be instead of loving them to just be a great person. To pursue whatever they want in life. And then people, it's control. It's codependency. It's narcissism. People do it in relationships, too. You know, I'll pay all the bills and I'll do everything because I want to have control over you. Not because I love you, but because I really just want to control you. This person has ran into a lot of people who they were like codependent on, or people who were codependent on them, however it resonates. And they thought there was love until they ran into you. And I was like, oh, wow, this person, like, they're nice and, and I don't have to do anything in return. But they're so broken and wounded that they don't trust you, really. It's, it's like somebody is just kind of sitting back waiting, like, I'm just waiting on you to betray me like everybody else did. And honestly, I feel like somebody is doing this to you, but you could be the same way. This is what happens, though. When you're codependent, you go into relationships with narcissists, they abuse you, and then you go through a period of not trusting anybody, being living in total isolation, being afraid of everything and everyone because you never ever want to relive that pain again. It looks like somebody is finally about to do the healing work. Will of Fortune, yeah. Five of Swords. There's a, a positive shift or change coming. And it's going to put an end to all of this sadness and this disappointment. All these feelings of being defeated and, you know, woe is me being the victim. Eight of Wands and then the Chariot and the Empress and the Magician. Yeah, this person is coming towards you. But let me say this. The only way 
this person will come to you like and, and it'll it'll work? Is it the ace of swords in the reverse? Is if you choose to not allow this person to be codependent and misuse and abuse you. You have to create bound your boundaries is what's going to teach this person boundaries. Seven of Wands. You have to for you, you're going to have to make this person understand that they need to love themselves. And the only way they're going to see how to love themselves is by you loving yourself. Ace of Cups in the world. How you love yourself is going to teach this person. You can't let this part you can't let this person manipulate you. You can't listen to their sob story or any of that. You're really gonna have to send this person out in the wild and let them learn. You're gonna have to catch those fish by yourself. When you learn how to catch the fish, you come back to me and then we can do dinner. But I'm not gonna feed you and take you out with me and show you how to fish, and then you get out there with them, you're fishing, but you're still the only person catching the fish. No. You go out there by yourself and catch your own fish. Romance. Wine and dine each other, getting to know each other. Look at this. Mirroring. Karmic partner and self-love. Somebody needs to go within. They have to get over this betrayal from the past with this karmic partner. And again, it's mirroring. That's why it's a do-over. If you look at this person as if they are you, you will realize you've gone through this same situation before. You've had to overcome narcissistic abuse and codependency. They're going through the same thing. I'm telling you, this person, they have genuine love for you. Clarity. Get on the same page. You and this person will get on the same page once they heal their inner child issues. Yeah, they're coming forward. Once they learn their sole purpose. For some of you, this is going to be platonic. For some of you, it's romantic. You going through this lesson, teaching this person how to go within, it was a part of your sole purpose. You were meant to teach this person something about self-love. You helped break them out of a karmic cycle. But they also helped break you out of a karmic cycle. Because a lot of you, you're used to giving, 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 giving. It's an empath narcissist paradigm here. It's like a you and this person both. It, it, it's weird because anytime you're dealing with a person who is an empath, if you're not careful, an empath deep, deep in their shadow can become very narcissistic, to be honest. Let me tell you, narcissists and dark empaths, they look just alike. They really do because a narcissist and an empath want the same thing. You want love. You want attention. You want validation because of rejection. Some people, some people, a, a narcissist is incapable of loving. An empath is. I don't think that this particular person, some of you, especially in the past, you've dealt with real narcissists. I don't think this person is, is a narcissist. I feel like this person, though, they're very, like, um, codependent. And to be honest, at times, they're an empath as well, but their dark empathy at times, it, it almost looks like narcissism. Because they're so wounded by rejection. They don't want to hurt you, but this person is unknowing, like unknowingly, unintentionally hurting people around them, hurt people, hurt people. They're hurting people around them because of their fears and their rejection and because they've gotten caught up with the situation. This person is carrying death around with them and they don't even realize it because they haven't gotten over an ending. They're going to come to you eventually and say that they're sorry. Once they go through this dark night of the soul and realize the error of their ways. Gift. Look. Gift. Union. Coming together. I'm sorry. This person is going to come to you and say they're sorry. They want a union and they want to make you happy. If you're separated from this person, they miss you. If you separate from... Later, they're going to miss you. This person is always going to miss you.
If you have deception, if somebody's wearing a mask, secret admirer, they're watching you, they're longing for you, they're missing you, they miss your friendship. Somebody is making plans. Somebody may be making plans to leave behind a lot to pursue this connection. You could be a water sign, Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio. They could be a water sign, an awakening here. There's a high priestess. You've awakened somebody. You've taught them. The, wow, y'all, this is crazy. What did I just say? Rejection. You've helped somebody heal from rejection. You've put somebody on a healing path to teach them the importance of, their, of them healing their inner child and their issues with rejection. But for a lot of you, you and this person, you're having conflict. Whether this is a friend, a family member, or a lover, you're having a lot of disagreements and and other like problems because your their shadow is fighting you. See, when a person comes in to love you and show you the light, the shadow is going to come to the surface. So it's like you and this person, your shadow is battling each other. You're like, well, I'm just trying to love you. I'm just trying to teach you how to fish. And they're pissed off at you because you won't just give them the fish. You won't just let them be hurt anymore. Wow. Come on, spirit. You won't just let them be hurt. You won't let them walk around you and be mean. You won't let them, you know, stay in a lower vibration. You're saying, well, okay, I'm going to leave. And this could be anybody. Because this could be a friend, family member, lover, whomever. You have people around you who have been dwelling in their shadow self for so long. And because you're putting up boundaries, they're pissed. They're mad about it. But every single time you get around these people, it's conflict. It's because you carry so much love. You're a high priestess. You're a healer. Whenever you get around these people, your light, it starts to shine. Hey, you start knocking on the door of their inner child, their shadow. Not even trying to. So before you know it, they, they're just angry. There's conflicts and disagreements. But when you surrender, there's wish fulfillment coming in and a lot of wealth and blessings. And if there's a separation, somebody's going to really start thinking about like the good old times with you. Era, Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. And they're going to want to come in and ask for forgiveness and to redeem themselves with you because they're going to regret not pursuing a connection with you where they are loyal. But this person, again, they have to work on their self-worth because when you lack self-worth, you will always be tempted by things that are actually forbidden. Yeah, telepathy. Somebody here has not been seeing something clearly, but you have proposal and commitment here. Signs. Somebody is finally seeing the signs that a person here is on awakening. They're ruled by ego. But there's a good change coming after a separation. Somebody is going to want to build a life with you or a family. But this person right now has to go. Somebody just has to go through a spiritual awakening. They have to separate themselves from unsupported friends, family, bad habits. And they have to forgive themselves in order to allow in unconditional love. This is just somebody's shadow. It's, it's, it's beating this person down right now. And if they come around you and you have light, they're they're automatic, they're upset with you. And you're like, what did I do to you? You didn't do anything to them. Your love, your light, your 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 pure existence is upsetting them because their their shadow is out. This is really beautiful though. This is real healing. Soulmate. See? Your soulmate loves, accepts, and respects you unconditionally, but there's interference here. An external party is intruding on this relationship. Longing and release here. This person, this person could, um, for some, somebody misses somebody from their past. For some of you, you have a person that's trying to come into your life and somebody is, is possibly attacking you because they, wait a minute, how... Because I'm saying this a lot of different ways. For some of you, you could be dealing with a person. The interference here is the fact that this person really, really wants to come towards you. They love you a lot. But their shadow, their unhealed wounds, their toxicity, and their disappointment and regret over situations from the past that they haven't released yet is blocking it. For some of you, you have a person that's in your energy that's longing for you. They're still trying to come in and interfere in your life. 
they are literally mistreating a person that they are with because they have to accept the fact that they can't come towards you. That's that's another situation. But radical acceptance and surrender can help you to let go. Both people in this connection are going <laughs> through a spiritual transformation, second chance. See, everything happens for a reason. That's why I have to start the camera over. There's going to be a second chance here at this love because this is your true love. But you have to let this person go so that they can actually become, oh, wow. I saw something the other day. It was a simple pro. It was so beautiful. Wait a minute. What did it say? I may not remember the exact words, but it said, it said, I know I'm not good enough for her, but I can't imagine her with anything better. So I'm becoming better for her. See, not everybody wants to let you go. Sometimes though, people have to grow in order to be able to hold on to you. This person is possibly about to try and do something new in their life to improve their financial situation. Look, your twin flame, they're here in, in your life now. But you're being advised, don't dismiss the red flags here. This person, they're still new to their journey. Something about them is still a little immature. They're still, with children here, they're still lacking awareness. And for some of you, this is a child. You're going to have to let this person go. Your own child, you're going to have to let them go to learn certain lessons on their own. For some of you, it's a parent. Whoever this is, some of you, even your own adult grown parents, sometimes you have to leave your parents and just say, you know what? I know something that you don't know at this point, but because they don't respect the fact that you're younger than them, they don't see you as being wise. Sometimes you have to just leave people, where you have to leave them to their own devices and just say, you know, I'm going to let you go over there and learn your lessons. And that's what happens when you are a high priestess. You are, you're usually in that energy of being the hermit. Your light will become so bright that every single person that you go around, you will begin to kind of like, um, you will aggravate their soul. <laughs> and it's going to push some people into a, a rage, which sometimes is good. It's going to force them to heal. It's going to force them to learn spiritual lessons. Somebody is going around you that was going to eventually, as they learn this spiritual lesson on how to overcome rejection and codependency, they're going to take a leap of faith and they're going to finally make a decision about this connection. But right now, you need to take time alone because you and this person are on different pages right now. But it is safe for you to trust this situation. This person is going to finally come in and be vulnerable with you and apologize. But right now, you need to have boundaries. New love. It says a new love or recommitment to love is developing. For some of you, somebody brand new is going to come in and you know you learned the lesson. And it's great. Or for some, you can't get mad sometimes when you prepare a person for a new connection. You're not meant to be with every person that you run across. Sometimes it's a lesson. It's a season. It's not going to be forever. For some of you, though, you and somebody, you are going to come back together. I'm getting strongly for a lot of you. You're going to come back together with somebody simply because of the fact that this video, I had to do it again. There was a, there was a real omen. And then the cards are saying that. But you first have to teach this person a spiritual lesson. And be patient. Everything will unfold in divine timing. Right now, this, this could be a friendship that is mostly sexual. It's passionate, but it's not enduring right now because somebody is still dealing with rejection. So if they are rejecting you or if you have to reject them, it's actually a part of divine protection. You need to go out and enjoy your life right now and just accept that everything happens for a reason. But this is faded. However, there will be time apart. This person and you both, you need to heal in order to have some forward movement here. Because I'm sure however this person is treating you or whatever they're doing now, this doesn't align with your morals and values. And you don't want to be full of regret and they don't want to regret how they're treating you either. This person right now, they can't really give you what you deserve and what you desire because they're not even giving themselves what they deserve. Yeah, look, wait, the timing isn't right. 
if you get into this situation, you're going to be teaching, you're going to be feeding them, teaching them how to, how to fish, frying the fish, and you might as well put a bib on them and feed them the, and keep feeding them the fish too. And it doesn't matter if this is a lover, a friend, or a family member. Like I said, for some, this could even be a parent. Some of us, sometimes you, you start to have to teach your parents when you become spiritually awakened. And you teach everybody how to teach, how to treat you based on what you allow them to do with you. I feel like a lot of you right now, um, you're, you're vibing so high that you have to have boundaries. You have to see, look, wow, wow. Spirit is really like talking today. You're an earth angel. You have to shield yourself. Protect yourself from harsh or fear-based energies by envisioning a cocoon of healing light surrounding you. You are a light worker who has come to earth to teach about love. You're an earth angel who is teaching other people how to love themselves. And you're teaching them how to do this by learning, by showing them that you're, you're, you love yourself enough to shield yourself from them. You give these people your light and then when, when the, the darkness comes to the surface, you have to say, okay. I came in, <laughs> I showed you the light, now I have to leave. Until we, until we can be on the same vibration, you can't stay there. You, you can't let their darkness come to the surface and destroy you. The only thing you were meant to do was to reveal to them that there was some darkness. That's it. You don't have to stay and let them abuse you. You're an earth angel. They have to respect you. And people respect you when you respect yourself. So for some of you, yeah, you need to walk away from some people. You have here books. Your life purpose involves writing, reading, editing, or selling spiritually based books. Yeah, so for some of you, you could be this high priest. Like I said, the page of Pentacles here. You can go and work on a project of your own. Clear yourself. Ask the angels to release any toxic energies that may have absorbed. It says vacuum away fear. Yeah. If you have people around you who are fearful, that's going to rub off on you. If they are afraid of rejection, you're going to be afraid of rejection. If they're afraid to take a leap of faith, you will find yourself afraid to take a leap of faith. That's why you have to shield yourself and your energy. Your energy is too pure. It's too sensitive for you to be around people who are not of the same vibration. And it happens with our friends, family, and lovers when you are a light worker. When you are going through a major ascension, sometimes you really have to get away from people who are not ascending with you. You have to catch up with them when they get to their level. It says, if you get nervous, focus on surface. I said, I just said surface. Service. Mercury retrograde is really trying to beat me today. Camera turning off now. I can't talk. <laughs> indigo. It says the person you're inquiring about is an indigo, meaning a highly sensitive, natural born leader. I always love when I see this card because look at how he's looking at this person. For some of you, you and this person, you're both chosen. You're both divine, whoever this other person is. But it's like somebody right now, they're like on training wheels. <laughs> you have to let this person take their training wheels off. For some of you, this is a parent. I keep getting that. Or if it's not a parent, it's like someone, you want another person, there's an age difference. So this could be like, you could be someone's big brother or sister. Or um, you could be dating somebody and it's an age difference. Or this is like a parental figure or whatever whatever it is. There is a difference here where one of you, you're a bit more wise or experienced in a certain subject. And I think it has to do with healing. You're dealing with somebody and no matter what the age difference is, you're just a bit more spiritually wise and evolved than this person. But right now, you need to cut the cord. Ask Archangel Michael to clear away any old attachments to fear that stem from past relationships, freeing you from destructive patterns, and be willing to forgive. Forgive this person. A lot of you, somebody, they are very fearful. I just heard they can even be mean and nasty. God sent you to this person, law of attraction. 
You attracted this person because you are of light and, and they are in darkness. They're not meant to stay in darkness. You can help this person out of this darkness. But don't get sucked in. If this person is too afraid to, to change and to grow and to heal, you can't stay there. And for some of you, that's what's happening. I feel like for some of you, you have people around you, they're willing to do the work. For some of you, you have people around you, you keep trying to help them and, and heal, heal them. They're so fearful, they're not, they're not budging. You have your ear chakra, throat chakra. Heal away your addictions and then crown chakra, Archangel Michael, wow. Crown chakra, someone's mindset, how they express their emotions, and then ear chakra. Notice messages that appear as sounds, music, and words from both external sources and within your mind. These messages are real answers to your prayers. The angels are helping you lovingly speak your truth. It's time to let go of behaviors that are blocking you from your heart's desire. I feel like I'm, this is even for like this high priestess earth angel. Even me right now, it's like speak these messages like we all can resonate with. It's you have to go out and speak the truth. And sometimes you have to tell people for the sake of my of myself, even like the work that I do for for me to come on here and share messages with you. I, I usually have to be in Herman mode. When people come around me with bad energy, I can't be around them because if I am, it's going to tank the messages. There's enough stuff going on in the collective that I am ch I can channel that is very dark and negative. I especially have to be mindful in my personal life not to have people sitting right here next to me that are in a bunch of dark, nasty energy. It's, it's enough of that out in the world. That my home is my sanctuary. Like, no, if you are in a negative energy, you cannot come around me. I have a responsibility to deliver certain messages. I'm not going to sit up here and, and, and channel the junk that's out in the world and then have it in my house too. And some of you, you're going to have to get more serious about your spiritual hygiene. You can't hang out with everybody. You can't sleep with everybody. You can't talk to everybody on the phone. What you hear other people talking about is going to affect what you talk about. If other people are always saying how they, um, they're always going through something, they're always talking about their troubles, they're always complaining, eventually you will turn into a chronic complainer. You have to be very careful of what you hear, what you listen to, what you think and what you say, because what you hear, what you see, what you listen to, what you think about, it's eventually going to be what you start manifesting in your own reality. Some of you are working very close with Archangel Michael. And he's guiding you through whatever this situation is. Sacral chakra. A lot of you, I don't know, first of the year, some of you may be choosing to um, do some type of fast or detox. Vegetarian and vegan is here in sacral chakra. Or this is for some of you, like you need to cleanse and clear your chakras. There's there's a something here is overwhelming. I, I feel like for, it's like <laughs> like your chakras are about to blow out because you, for some you've been you've been doing so much healing work. I can resonate with that with myself. I've been channeling so much stuff lately that it's like, whoa. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm like, okay. I take a break and then I'm like, I need a break from the break. Overall, though, this is good. This is just a lot of people. You're learning about per the importance of personal boundaries and your spiritual hygiene, especially as an earth angel. I feel like this reading can help a lot of people who especially are um healers in whatever you do some people are, maybe you do um reiki or something you have to make sure that you're taking time out for yourself you when you get in the when when it's a part of your life purpose to always look at other people as if they are you you always want to help people you want to heal them but you can't help and heal a person to the point that you will allow them to destroy you and, you know, it's, it's easy to do that with a person that you love and with, like, your friends. 
your friends and your family and lovers, whomever. You want to see the best for them, but when a person, when they don't want to, to do what's best for themselves, eventually you have to just say, okay, you know, I, I fed you one night. I fed you one morning. And now I'm going to teach you out and teach you how to, I'm going to take you out and teach you how to fish. If you still starving, you know, I, I don't know what to tell you. I, I gave you everything I had. But the part that even a healer will deal with is the codependency. A lot of people, you don't even want to push the person out the door and allow them to go and hunt and fish for themselves. You still want to watch them. That's codependency. When you get so comfortable with yourself and you love yourself, you don't feel the need to try to hold on to anybody. When you do that, that means you're still struggling with codependency too. A healer, you have to be able to detach, to detach with love. Um, yeah. That's, that's just with anything. That temperance energy too is like earth angel energy and it makes me think fire and water. You cannot always allow your emotions to control all of your actions. Your emotions will have you doing a lot of stuff that you don't need to be doing. Entertaining situations that you don't need to entertain. Right? So you have to find the, the right balance. I'm going to pull these cards and then I'm going to close out. You have the truth be told in thinker. Somebody is thinking about opening up to you and telling you the truth. They feel like they're losing you, like they're losing time. Yin, feminine energy. You're probably most likely a lot of you, you're ready to receive. And you have to make sure too, especially those divine feminists that are watching, they carry you know, that high priestess energy. You can't allow yourself the stress, fear, and anxiety of you not getting what you want. Don't allow that to put you in situations with people where you start to overgive and overcompensate. Milk and honey. Don't lower your standards. Don't settle for something that's not for you. Wait for it to be fair. See, when you are codependent, you, a lot of people who are codependent, they don't have any kind of, you don't have patience. As soon as something presents itself to you, that will allow you to have the comfort of a person being with you or whatever. You're, you're willing to take on things and it gets you caught up in the crossfire. You shouldn't do that. I'm talking to myself and because I've done it plenty of times. I'm, I'm still doing it. Usually, the guy has to come and yank me up because I'm, I, I always go just a little bit too far. <laughs> Listen, I'm being honest. This is me being transparent. I always do too much. I'm just like, even going, it's like going out looking for a birthday gift. So I'm always, I do too much. I find myself now, it's like, recently I was looking for, um, this has happened twice. And like looking for a birthday gift or a Christmas gift. I'm like, well, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do, I love cards. I love cards. I'll go and I'll buy someone three or four birthday cards. They don't even like cards. I just, I like, and I'm, I can be a little indecisive too. <laughs> I'm like, I like this one. I like that one. And I, I have to stop myself. Tori, you just picked up four birthday cards. I still haven't gotten to the point where I only do one, but at least like, listen, I'm not going to do more than two. You know, it's, it's like little things, but I'm teaching myself. You don't have to do all that. When I, a long time ago, when I used to do personal readings, literally people would book a 45 minute reading with me. The reading would be eight, like an hour and a half long. Cause I'm just like, well, spirit said this and that, and it's like, Tori, stop. Naturally, I just give, 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 give. But then before you know, I'm tapped out. Serendipity, everything happens for a reason. Truth be told, Truth be told, all that glitters is not gold. Be flexible in a situation. Something that is for you is here and now. But somebody, the community and in between worlds, somebody is still possibly seeking validation. 
somehow and it's, it's keeping them tied to a certain mindset and some bad behaviors this is your soulmate you don't have to pray visualize but let them go let them let them see the truth about something so right now you have a soulmate connection you're you're at a, it's a fork in the road something here has to take a pause but I feel like you and this, this is un, it's an unfinished symphony. You and this person, you will come back together and you will exchange gifts. It's funny, I just was talking about gifts and it'll be fair when you have a do-over in your new life, in the second chapter, excuse me, with this person or if God gives you somebody new, you're going to know what to do the next time around based on what you learned here. I don't, for the majority of you though, you're going to have a do-over with this person. But a lot of you, I don't feel like this is a past person. I feel like this is someone you now dealing with somebody and you are either in a separation or you're about to go into a separation and it's a much needed separation. Because it is, it's fated for you and this person to co-create. But it's also fated for you to leave this situation right now because you're getting bored. You're going around and around. It's a never-ending story of chaos and conflict. In order for you to go the distance with this person or this situation or whatever it is, you're going to have to take time out to breathe and send them back out into the world and allow yourself to go back in the world. For some of you, the truth is you need to see if there's other fish in the sea. You need to just explore and see what truly makes you happy. Sometimes it's necessary. You don't need any kind of balance. Sometimes you need to go out and see things. If this is a family member, they need to see you. Listen, those other people don't have your back like I have your back. But the only way people will learn your value is when you remove yourself. And you take all that goodness and value that you bring to their life. You take it away. That's when they see, oh, I can't depend on these friends and family like I could divine feminine or masculine. They'll start thinking about the next time they want to act a fool with you. They'll start thinking twice about some of their piss poor behavior. Some of y'all are definitely learning this even with the holidays, especially Christmas. Some of you should think, how many people did you buy gifts for? And then and then sit back and think, how many gifts did you get? Overcompensating. Everybody has a gift from you under their tree, and your tree probably don't have there's no gifts under your tree. How many times are you showing up to the the, the wedding engagement parties, birthday shout, birthdays, baby showers with, with a gift in hand? Go going overboard, but nobody ever gives you anything. Everybody sees you as the high priestess and, and the the giver, the healer, they don't think you need anything. So they don't even think to give you anything. But you keep just giving, giving, giving. You, ha you have to get control of that. Because when you keep doing that, what you're saying is to the universe is, I don't love myself that much. And I don't feel like I'm worthy of people giving to me just as much as I give to them. And then you will constantly get caught up in karmic situations with people who will use you up and abuse you. They're going to use you as long as you let them use you.